starts right now. Well, starting this morning with a look outside with live cam. Cross your fingers for another shower or storm, and Mike is tracking a few this morning. And a good morning to you. It is Monday. It is July 3rd. Hi, happy Monday. Thanks for joining us. We hope you had a wonderful weekend. I know I enjoyed the cloud cover yesterday. Not bad at all. Temperatures were relatively nicer around here, all things considered. We actually had some few showers around early Sunday yeah. morning, but here we are on a Monday and a lot of folks are still off today. Oh yeah, long, long, long holiday weekend and uh, it was pretty toasty starting off. We did hit 100 Friday, Saturday, yesterday, 97. So it was a little more pleasant in the mm -hmm. afternoon. It's like you walk outside, it's like, Ah, it's not walking into the blast furnace here. So uh, a couple of showers and storms, as you mentioned, are showing up on radar right now, well off to the, uh, the west. And, and that's just some of the energy that is then going to be sticking around later on today to uh, help out with a couple of more of those showers and even a few uh, storms. So over there, right around to now Brackettville, we've got even a few uh, lightning strikes that are being detected. Those are sliding up to the north and probably going to see a couple of decent downpours associated with that as well in that darker shade of red and even that purplish area. And then further up in portions of the uh, hill country, we do have a couple of more of those showers up there. And again, everything is kind of sliding primarily up to the north, right around Junction, just a few little light sprinkles around uh, Rock Springs and there in western Kerr County as well as western Gillespie County. So again, some of this energy is going to be left over later on today. And so once we go through some of the afternoon heating, that's going to help to fire up a couple of more of those showers and storms mid upper 70s some low 80s out there it's not bad when you step outside dew points are mm, noticeable you notice the humidity when you when you step outside but it's not just a kind of wet blanket we do have heat index reading 85 in town 86 up the road at canyon lake we are going to see the humidity drop a little bit in the afternoon mold sure could drop down that's from some of the showers we had around here yesterday very high 95 20 and it is a yellow day for cps energy. If you want to find out more about conservation, scan that QR code right there. Night 89 at noon, 97 high temperature today. A few extra clouds hanging around sort of like yesterday. One or two of those showers, maybe a thunderstorm out there as well. Pretty much the same thing the next couple of days. Big question. Our triple digits back in the forecast. Details coming up in just a couple of minutes. Steph, Mark. Thank you, Mike. New this morning, an emergency warning from San Antonio Pets Alive. Their rescue center is facing an emergency situation and must move out all animals from the location immediately. So that means they need people to foster the animals today. Their team will be at the rescue center today from 10 to noon for people to come and take an animal. Then the remaining animals will be moved to the already full medical center location on Marbuck Road. Their fosters can come meet and take an animal home. They will not be able to reopen the rescue center for at least three weeks. We have more information on our website at kset.com. Top of your morning headlines, getting room service might take longer than usual for some travelers in California this July 4th holiday. And there's another standoff which could play havoc with the entertainment industry for at least the next few months. CNN's John Lawrence reports. Roughly 15,000 employees at 65 major hotels in the Los Angeles area walked off the job Sunday and are on strike. The union representing the workers say they've been in talks since April over issues including an immediate $5 per hour raise and better health care and retirement benefits. All of this stuff is happening with the backdrop, backdrop of these hotels making so much money. A lot of them now are making more money in revenue than they were in 2019. Among the hotels being affected by the strike, the W Hollywood, Beverly Hilton, Sheraton Grand, and the LA Grand. During the pandemic, we were called essential workers. Now there's no pandemic. Uh, employers think we are not essential anymore and they think they can run without us, but we all know that's not true. A Marriott spokesperson released a statement saying it will work toward a fair labor agreement and have protocols in place to keep the doors open. Speaking of strikes. We are SAG after strong and solidarity with the WGA. Plans for thousands of actors to join the picket line against studios and streaming services are now on hold until July 12th. But if things don't get worked out by then... You're going to start seeing a big drop off if the actors take to the streets in new shows on both the traditional networks and the streamers. And you're going to see some of your ceremonies like the Emmys go dark. I'm John Lawrence reporting.
So if the Screen Actors Guild, American Federation of Television and Radio Artists, better known as SAG, after do eventually go on strike, they would join the 11,000 members of the Writers Guild of America who have already been on strike for going on two months. The Secret Service evacuated parts of the White House on Sunday after agents spotted an unknown object on the grounds. Officials determined the item was not a threat. The Secret Service says the evacuation was done as a precaution. President Biden was not at the White House at the time. He's spending the weekend at Camp David and is expected back at the White House tomorrow. In Washington State, growing concern about a rapidly moving wildfire that's already damaged several homes and is threatening more structures. That fire started Sunday morning in an area about 230 miles south of Seattle. The fire's already charred more than 125 acres. Residents there are being told to evacuate. It's unclear what started the fire. Right now the fire is spreading and is not under control. The weather is impacting the long July 4th holiday weekend with both heavy rain and dangerous heat from coast to coast. Temperatures soaring above 100 degrees in California and heat indexes up to 110 in the southeastern U.S. As ABC's Rena Roy shows us how 68 million Americans are dealing with the aftermath. Heat alerts now impacting more than 75 million people from Oregon to Arizona to Georgia. At least 14 people have died in the sweltering temperatures in the south. Have you ever experienced heat like this before? No. In Atlanta, a cooling center opened to get people out of the scorching temperatures. And in Tennessee, first responders are encouraging people who go outside to stay hydrated. I'd be all over Nashville and I see a lot of dehydration. At the Jersey Shore, people flocking to the beach to beat the heat. And where it's raining, it's not exactly a welcome relief. A torrential downpour hitting Chicago, up to three inches of rain falling, stranding drivers, delaying trains, forcing interstates to close. It also halted the completion of Saturday's NASCAR Xfinity Series race in downtown Chicago. The city has had more rain this weekend than May and June combined. Rena Roy, ABC News, New York. Time now, 437 and 80 degrees for now. Coming up this week on GMA, what better way to celebrate America's birthday than by journeying to some of the iconic main streets across the country. This morning, getting ready to visit the beating heart of Stillwater, Minnesota, to see what this mighty street means to its residents, small business owners, and visitors from across our country. That's on Good Morning America, beginning at 7. July is a great time to help those in need, and after the break, some simple ways you can do just that. It's all part of our KSA community outreach. Checking traffic early on your Monday morning, kind of a holiday Monday out there, so we are expecting lighter traffic. 151 uh, out there at 410, no problems to report. Justin will be handling traffic duties coming up beginning at 5 a.m. this morning. And looking out there with live cam, uh, not too bad yet. Uh, things will heat up this afternoon, but we're gonna be checking in with Mike to see what we can expect for July 4th. We'll be right back. Good morning. Welcome back. 440 July is here. And as we start a new month, there are several KSAC community events we want to let you know about. July is Disability Pride Month, a time to celebrate people of all abilities with a wide range of needs. So we are teaming up with our KSAC community partners for a phone bank on July 20th. It's all in support of Project Men. And here you can see some information on your screen. So Project Men works to improve the quality of life for those living with disabilities and illnesses through refurbishment, reuse, and distribution of medical equipment and other assistive technology. Then on July 22nd, there will be a medical equipment donation drive. On that day, you can bring your gently used medical equipment to the wonderland of the America's Mall. If you can't make it then, you can drop off items anytime Monday and Friday between 8 and 5 at Project Men's Headquarters. They're at 5015 Wurzbach Road. So we have a list of the most needed items on our website. Also in July, Clarity Con conference brings together teachers, counselors, nurses, psychologists, and other healthcare professionals. 40 experts will talk about the social and mental well-being of children. Clarity Con will be held on July 20th and 21st. The Clarity Child Guidance Center works to support the mental wellness of children and families, regardless of their ability to pay. So they are the only nonprofit mental health treatment center in South Texas for kids 3 to 17 years old. We have more information in the KSET community section on our website at KSET.com. 442, 80 degrees. The best 4th of July deals are dropping right now from clothing to tech furniture. We're going to have the details next in your GMA First Look.
in this morning's GMA First Look, strategizing those 4th of July sales. A lot of that summer merchandise has been on the shelf since April. So that is going to be discounted between 50 to 60 percent. And it, for some department stores, up to 70 percent. Retailers slashing prices on everything from clothes to tech to furniture. But with Amazon, Best Buy and Target all launching their big sales events next week should consumers wait or spend their money now. Anything that's electronic and gadget oriented, you're going to see deep discounts, especially at stores like Best Buy. But what you want to stay away from are televisions. Those discounts come much later in the year. And we'll have much more on how to get the biggest bang for your 4th of July buck coming up at 7 a.m. With your GMA First Look, I'm Ariel Reshef, ABC News, New York. Firework sales are booming and business is also booming for those who sell them. And Camelia Juarez spoke with vendors and customers about their firework safety tips. Every summer, the July sky shines bright with fireworks. I'm looking forward to like the big booms in the firework show. But it's also a busy time for firefighters. Just be very careful and, and firework safety is, is so important. And all the yellow tags here, buy one, get one free. Scott Quidley selling fireworks in East Bear County says sales are up now that the burn ban has been lifted. We got the little uh, chickens down here. Now he can sell bottle rockets again. Quidley urges everyone to be cautious. Oh, and those, those can be dangerous specifically because you don't know where they're going. They can go anywhere, they can land in grassy areas, and they go high, and then where they fall, that's where it's dangerous. Although there's no burn ban, it's been a hot and dry end of June. There we go. One family buying fireworks say they water their lawns multiple times several days before Independence Day. So I always warn my neighbors, say, hey, can you just like turn your sprinklers on? It just kind of ensures everyone's safety. Nothing's going to be like dry. Melissa says she lives in a smaller neighborhood, so she didn't buy fireworks that would spark far. We got the smaller, lower the ground kind of flyers. Um, we don't want them to go over anyone's house and keep it a little bit more controlled. Camilio Juarez, Quesa 12 News. Speaking of fireworks happening tomorrow, the city of San Antonio's official HEB 4th of July celebration returns to Whitlawn Lake. So it kicks off tomorrow morning at 11 and will go until 930 at night. There will be games, live entertainment and fireworks. The event is free and open to the public. So just a reminder, no overnight camping at Woodlawn Lake will be allowed this year. No accidents, no delays. The only thing you might see is again, uh, McCullough and Brooklyn here in the downtown area, I-35 still closed. Caught me off guard this week, and I've known about it for a while now. Oh, it's like, surprise. <laughs> surprise. you got to find another way downtown. But, I, yeah, I figured uh, it out pretty quickly. Yeah. yeah, I drove past it the other day on yeah. the access road right mm -hmm. down there, and there yeah. were lots of trucks right underneath the highway. And yeah. Couldn't, I mean, you know, can't figure out what they're doing. I've only seen it from the upper. I haven't yeah. been down underneath. So it's been a few weeks. It's, it's been a challenge. Mm -hmm. Indeed. So, so that's right. it right now for the roads. Okay. Uh, nice weather today. I think we've got a couple of showers, a couple of thunderstorms off to the west right now. We're going to show you that in a second. Beautiful sunset yesterday in Boulder. We had a lot of clouds hanging around here. Those clouds help to keep temperatures down. Thank you very much for the KSAC Connect picture, by the way. Nothing going on here in town right now. We do have some of these clouds hanging around here, but it's off to the west where we have some uh, showers and thunderstorms, and these are starting to uh, well, starting to, to make their mark right there around Bracketville and everything is sliding up to the north. And let me uh, just turn off this lightning very quickly here. And you can see that as far as rainfall rates, it's not really coming down necessarily in in buckets. But I mean, we're getting some decent uh, downpours out here. And let's see right there. Uh, this little spot there around Brackettville coming down at the rate of about four inches per hour. That doesn't mean you get that much rain, but it's just a, a decent, you know, quick little shot. And then just to the northeast of that, we're seeing uh, six inch rainfall rates. But again, they're moving along, so you're not going to be seeing six inches worth of rain. But that's uh, how how heavy or how hard I should say that it is coming down. And obviously lightning associated with that as well. So again, those are going to continue to work their way up to the uh, north and then further up to the north. We do have a couple of more of these showers, <clears throat> excuse me, 
Rock Springs up around Junction. So some leftover energy or some energy up here, I should say that is going to be sticking around. That's going to help to touch off more showers and even a couple of uh, storms later on today. Heat index right now is 85 degrees in town. Same thing at Stinson 86 Canyon Lake. Dew points are not bad. They're actually up slightly compared to this time yesterday, at least here in town and pretty much holding steady in portions of the uh, hill country. We will see the drop in the humidity later on this afternoon, so it will be somewhat more comfortable later on. And with cloud cover hanging out here, we are still going to be staying just below 100. We'll get the humidity to come back, of course, then in the overnight hours. Temperatures, we've got that 20% chance. That's the, uh, the showers out there to the west this morning. Temperatures will drop down maybe another couple of degrees, then bounce back up 89 at noon. And then we start to see the next chance or those just one or two scattered showers and storms out there. 97 high temperature later on today. Computer models aren't overly bullish on rain. Just again, one or two of them scattered about here and there. That's going to be going into this evening and pretty much the same situation as we go into uh, tomorrow as well. Just a stray little uh, shower thunderstorm scattered about here or there. We're going to be up to 97, like I said, today, 98 tomorrow and staying in the upper 90s as we go in through pretty much the rest of the week. A stray shower or two here or there. Possible, not likely. All the uh, fireworks tomorrow evening should go off without a hitch. There'll be, again, just one or two scattered about here and there. But it also looking like we're going to be saying hello to triple digits again mm. once we get into this weekend. Well, I mean, it's still summer, I guess. Yeah, but we're still supposed to be at 94. Oh. <laughs> Average, so. Well, maybe it'll pay yeah. off later. Uh, Let's hope. Okay, thanks, Mike. 451, 80 degrees. And we have a lot more coming your way after the break. We're going to show you which movie topped the weekend box office. That's next in your Spotlight News. You pick three numbers, 784, Fireball 7. Daily four numbers, 2206, Fireball 4. Cash 5, 9, 11, 12, 19, 24. Plato, Texas, 27, 29, 35, 37, 44, 46. And your Powerball numbers, 4, 17, 35, 49, 61, Powerball 8, Power Play 2. Good luck. But I've been looking for this all my life. It's a $60 million debut for Indiana Jones and the Dial of Destiny. That's in line with predictions, but still not a great start for the fifth and final Indiana Jones film, especially since it costs just shy of $300 million to make, not counting marketing. I just want to be Ruby Gilman, normal teenager. The animated Ruby Gilman teenage crack and fared far worse, a 5.2 million sixth place opening. I'm Brooklyn's one and only Spider-Man. Spider-Man Across the Spider-Verse is still the summer's top performer, not only holding second place in week five, but also crossing the $600 million global earnings mark over the weekend. Ted Lasso's season three final episode was watched by more people than any Apple TV Plus series in history, according to the streamer, which says viewers watched 1.24 billion minutes of the feel-good comedy the week the finale dropped. But happy birthday, Tom Cruise. He turned 61 Monday. And that's what's happening in Hollywood. I'm Christopher Watson, ABC News. We're taking Tom out for lunch today, right? Yeah, of course. Cool. My schedule's free. Me too. <laughs> a Texas lake where anglers frequently reel in monster fish was named the best lake for bass fishing in the U.S. In the whole country. We talked about this lake a couple months ago. OH Ivy Reservoir came out at the top of the list. It's 55 miles east of San Angelo and has become the destination for bass angler. It also helps feed the Toyota Share Longer program uh, from the Texas Parks and Wildlife Department. That runs year round and is aimed at enhancing bass fishing in Texas through breeding. The lake was previously named the best bass lake in the central region. And I've done a whole story on the Share Lunker program. And then that record catch from uh, angler Jason Kahn. Look for all of those on our website at kksat.com. We've got you covered when it comes to fishing. Oh, yeah. I was going to say impressive catch there yeah. in the video. Remember when we inter inter interviewed him yeah. a couple months ago? Yeah, that's pretty neat. Yeah, good guy too. 456, 80 degrees. And looking out there with Transky, looking over at Highway 281 at San Pedro, things look good there. And we haven't seen any problems on the roadways, but our Justin Horn is in this morning for Stephen Cavazos, and we're going to check in with him very soon. Live from KSAT 12. 
Good Morning San Antonio starts right now. I'm ABC's M. Wynn in Washington. The CIA director says the recent turmoil in Russia has created a rare opportunity to recruit spies. This as Ukraine advances its counteroffensive. The latest coming up. And I'm, oh, I'm sorry. Go ahead. Yeah, <laughs> Looking, that's you. You're right. That's you. Yep. <laughs> Looking out there with live cam, actually, we see the accident out there. That's what we're looking at, but right now it's 80 degrees. We're going to be checking in with Mike for the forecast and with Justin for that accident on the roadways very soon. My apologies. I loaded the wrong show. I'm in the right one now. Okay, now this is the part. It says Mark. Good morning. Mark uh, <laughs> says good morning. It is Monday, July 3rd. <laughs> Thanks for joining us today. <laughs> it is Monday. <laughs> yes. Yeah, yeah, it's Monday. It says toss to weather. Okay. Your turn. Throwing it literally to you, Mike. Very, very good. Thank you very much. Nice weekend. It was on the hot side. We did hit 100 on uh, Saturday. And uh, let me do a couple of quick things on my computer right here. Uh, we did stay right below 100 yesterday, which was obviously uh, good news. It was a little more comfortable in the afternoon. So that was a nice little, uh, nice little break right there. But uh, as far as the next couple of days, yeah, we are going to be staying just shy of 100. Although, we are still going to be on the warm side of things. We're still going to have temperatures about three or four degrees above normal. Now let's see if I can get my magic to work there on that. Yep, there we go. 80 here in town. 73 helps when you hit the right buttons on the computer. 73 is the dew point. So yeah, you notice the humidity when you uh, step outside this morning. 97 as I mentioned for a high temperature today. Normal average is 94. And as far as the aquifer, it's been taking some pretty big hits during the week when a lot of folks are watering did go up six tenths of a foot yesterday and the allergens we had some of that's a little bit of light rain overnight Saturday night into early yesterday morning and so mold is definitely on the high side. Speaking of rain we do have some showing up on radar right now as you can see a nice little cluster of some uh, thunderstorms down there right uh, about halfway in between Uvalde as well as Del Rio right around to Brackettville and everything is sliding as you can see primarily up to the north and not at a huge, you know, not really moving that quickly, but uh, and it is dumping some uh, decent rain out there. We do have obviously some lightning strikes and these are continuing to grow, but they will continue to work their way further up to the north. And then we've got a couple of them. Uh, you can see sort of this line going through Rock Springs and then even further up to the north around Junction. But uh, we'll definitely keep an eye on this batch of rain out here. You're obviously getting some decent rain, which is very, very nice. And we'll see how long those uh, decide to hold together. And then that energy is going to be sticking around later on this afternoon and that's going to give us another chance for uh, some just a couple of scattered showers and storms here and there. So warm and humid. We've got that little bit of rain out there to the west. 97 as I mentioned stray shower or storm today. Pretty much the same situation tomorrow, maybe a degree higher than that. Again, rain is not going to be a huge issue. Unfortunately, small rain chances than the rest of the week and Yep, looks like it is going to be getting hotter. And yes, it looks like we're going to have another dose of triple digits by the weekend. Details coming up in just a couple of minutes. Traffic Authority, the man, the myth, the legend. Oh, Justin thank Horn. Thank you for that intro, Mike. Uh, we're going to start with live cam, actually, because we have a vantage point of a crash here uh, that you're looking right now at 410 and I-10. So this is I-10 eastbound. Traffic is getting by, uh, but there is what is reported as a rollover right there at 410 and I-10, and that's probably going to cause some slowdowns if you're traveling eastbound along I-10. We want to point that out. That's kind of the one crash that we have out there right now that is uh, causing issues. Let's look at the map here. And uh, that crash right there, there is another one reported, uh, 281 near St. Mary's. So this is the one that may cause a few slowdowns so far. It's not causing any issues, at least according to our map. Uh, then as we look at 281 right there near St. Mary's, another reported crash. Still green there too. Not a lot of traffic just yet. And of course, some people have the day off. So the morning commute might not be as bad. And I want to point out, of course, so we've been reporting this morning. We've got the 4th of July celebrations coming up at Woodlawn Lake tomorrow. Uh, just heads up on parking. There is free parking, of course, at Woodlawn Lake, but it fills up quickly. Uh, if you're doing uh, parking on the streets, they're asking you just to please be mindful of the no parking signs. And it will get crowded, so expect those roads. Woodlawn Avenue, uh, Josephine Tobin Drive, all those are going to get pretty crowded, especially around 9 o'clock when the fireworks get started. So heads up there. That's for 
tomorrow. Uh, we're going to continue to track these crashes that we have on the map right now. We'll have more coming up here in just a bit, guys. San Antonio fire investigators trying to determine if some weekend fun has led to Monday morning heartache. They say fire has destroyed a home that was the site of a backyard party. Katrina Weber is live on the northeast side on Nelson Dedo Street, not far from Nacogdoches. And Katrina, was anyone hurt? No, the good news is no injuries. Firefighters told us a woman was living here with her grandparents and they all made it out safely. Now, it looks like they had to remove part of this backyard fence, but you can see the extent of the damage back here. According to what firefighters tell us, this family was doing probably what a lot of people are doing this weekend had a party. Uh, at some point later, this fire broke out. Let me give you a look at the video that we have to show you uh, when fire crews were here. This fire broke out around 1230 this morning. Firefighters have been focusing on an area where they say there was a jacuzzi or a hot tub and a uh, barbecue pit. And they believe that the fire started somewhere right in that area, then spread to the home, got up into the attic and caused major damage. Uh, they are looking at possibly one of those two things, either the, either the barbecue pit or the hot tub as being the source of the fire. But the last word we had from them, uh, they, they determined which one was uh, to blame. But again, a whole lot of damage here, a lot of heartache for this family. Uh, but luckily, firefighters tell us that they do have another place to stay. But uh, this is a loss, a complete loss uh, as far as things go. This, uh, everything destroyed here by that fire. Reporting live on the northeast side, Katrina Weber, KSAT 12 News. New this morning, San Antonio police say two people are dead after a crash on the city's far southeast side. It happened just before 10 o'clock last night at the intersection of Highway 181 and Old Corpus Christi Road. at South Press and I-37. Police say a driver in a silver sedan pulled out of a parking lot and were hit by a white SUV. Both driver and passenger in the silver sedan were killed and one of the passengers of the white SUV was taken to the hospital. And San Antonio police are also investigating a shooting on the west side. It happened just before 1 a.m. on Fair Valley Street near Ray Ellison Boulevard and Loop 410. Now, police tell us a man in his 30s was walking out to his work van when another person walked up and shot at him multiple times. The man was hit in the arm and taken to University Hospital. He is expected to be okay. That suspect ran off and has not been found by police. Other stories we're following this morning. CIA Director William Burns calling that short-lived armed rebellion in Russia a challenge to the Russian state. This now creating a rare opportunity to recruit Russian spies. This comes after his secret visit to Ukraine where he met with President Zelensky, who is in now in the middle of a major counteroffensive to take back territory from Russia. ABC's M. Wynn is tracking the latest this morning. This morning, U.S. CIA Director William Burns capitalizing on the short-lived mutiny in Russia by Wagner Group mercenary boss Yevgeny Prigozhin, stating Russian frustrations with the war in Ukraine is making it easier to recruit spies. Disaffection with the war will continue to gnaw away at the Russian leadership. That disaffection creates a once-in-a-generation opportunity for us at CIA, at our core, a human intelligence service. We're not letting it go to waste. Burns in England calling it striking that Prigozhin, once a close confidant of Vladimir Putin, preceded his actions with scathing words on Russia's most senior military officers. The impact of those words and those actions will play out for some time. A vivid reminder of the corrosive effect of Putin's war on his own society. The CIA launched an effort in May to recruit Russians who had expertise in science, technology or diplomacy on the Telegram social media site. The campaign provided instructions on how to contact the CIA on the dark web. The Kremlin accusing the U.S. of trying to destabilize their country. And overnight, Russia launching drone attacks on the capital, Kyiv, after a 12-day break. Officials saying air defense systems destroyed all targets. This as Ukraine advances their counteroffensive. Around the devastated eastern city of Bakhmut, Ukrainian soldiers telling ABC News they believe they can liberate the area. Ukrainian officials again warning Russia might also attack the Zaporizhia nuclear plant to try to disrupt their counteroffensive. 
Director Byrne says Putin's regime has inflicted long-lasting damage on Russia's military and economy for years to come. As for that CIA post on social media letting Russians know how to reach them, it had 2.5 million views in just the first week. M. Wynn, ABC News, Washington. Time now is 5.09 and 80 degrees for now. Still to come on GMSA, Twitter limiting the amount of posts users can read per day. That's ahead in your morning consumer news. And after the break, a new perspective at the look of Saturn and what experts are now saying. Back here a little bit closer to home than that is a <laughs> live cam right now looking out towards the airport. If you're traveling this long holiday weekend, including today, oh boy, uh, good luck to you. Wish you the best. Hope you get where you need to go. We'll talk to Justin about the roads coming up. NASA is releasing these new images of Saturn. Take a look with us. This is the first near-infrared observation of the planet, detailing the planet's intricate ring system with three of its moons clearly visible. Now, as astronomers study these images, it's possible they may detect some undiscovered moons. The data could also help scientists put together a more complete picture of the current system of Saturn. And happening now in New York, as if the smoke and haze weren't enough, the city has been invaded by tons of flying insects. So some experts say they may be winged aphids and not gnats. So aphids are common all over the U.S. and some say the warm winter temps may be causing them to swarm. Others say the wildfires in Canada could also be a factor. Now, for most of us, that is all the sign of the coming apocalypse. But for New Yorkers, it's called Monday. Oh, no. Right now, 514, <laughs> 79 degrees. And just ahead, Apple's next AirPods Pro may check your hearing health and take your temperature as well. Details next in your morning tech bites. I'm a bear. I'm coming out of hibernation after the best nap of my life. And Papa is hungry. <laughs> And while you're hitting the trail, I'm hitting your cooler. Oh, cheddar! I've got a hot dog bun! And your cut rate car insurance might not pay for all of this. So get all state and be better protected from mayhem. <laughs> like me. Roar! New emergency crystals pop and fizz when you throw them back. And who doesn't love a good throwback? New emergency crystals. Throw it back. You've evolved. You've changed. So have we. That's why New Dove Body Wash now has 24 hour renewing micro moisture for continuous care. New Dove Body Wash. Change is beautiful. In today's Tech Bites, limits on Twitter. Elon Musk has announced a cap on how many tweets users can read each day. Existing unverified accounts get 1,000, while those that are new get 500. Meantime, those who've paid for a verified account get 10,000. And new health features could be coming to your headphones. Bloomberg reports a future generation of Apple's AirPods will be able to check for potential hearing issues and determine your body's temperature. No word on when the new hardware could be released. And Spotify is said to be looking at adding full-length music videos. According to reports, the company is exploring potential partners. Right now, video on Spotify is limited to GIFs, podcasts, and storytelling clips. Music videos might help it compete with Apple and YouTube. Those are your Tech Bites. I'm Rhiannon and Allie. Have a great day. I am, admittedly, a creature of habit, used to Mike and uh, St Stephanie to my left. No. <laughs> and, uh, you guys. Uh, Stephanie. You guys. It's early. And then this guy pops up to my right. But yes. yes. Hi, Justin. Good morning. Yeah, normally morning. you're on this Hi. side. Yeah. How are we doing? We're, We're doing good. Well. How are you? It's Monday. Yes. I'm feeling, I'm feeling all right. You know, it's Monday. It's yeah. kind of a holiday. Not really a holiday, but kind of a holiday. Yeah. Yeah. Well, for some Should people. Be, yeah. Well, yeah, for a lot. Of, I mean, this is basically mm -hmm. the holiday for a lot of folks, I think. So. It is. Uh, we expect traffic to be a little bit lighter, but... We have had a couple of uh, incidents so far. Let's start with actual live cam here. This is uh, using our camera here above 410 and 910. You see the flashing lights there on the bottom right. That is a crash on uh, eastbound I-10, and we are detecting, or uh, what is showing as a rollover, and uh, this may cause a few issues, but so far it hasn't been a, a big, big problem uh, because there just isn't a lot of traffic. Uh, so heads up there, there is... Uh, uh, it looks like it's live again. A little, uh, uh, maybe a couple of lanes are closed, and that is causing some problems. We'll keep an eye on it. Uh, meantime, that's uh, we've got that incident at 410 and I-10, and then another 
uh, and it's not showing up, but it's still there. Notice we still have green on the map, so it's showing that the traffic's still moving. But we've got another incident right at 281 at the curve at uh, St. Mary's. That may cause a few issues as well. We'll keep an eye on that. We don't have eyes on that with TransGuide on either one of those uh, shots. And then I mentioned this earlier. We've, of course, we've got the big fireworks going on at Woodlawn Lake tomorrow. Just a heads up with parking. There is free parking there, but it's going to fill up quickly. There's street parking, but you got to be careful with the uh, no parking signs. Uh, so if you're heading out there, you may want to get out there a little bit early. Uh, we know that it gets uh, crowded. And as Mike will tell you, the forecast is not bad for fireworks coming up tomorrow. Uh, maybe you're doing some traveling today along the uh, interstates here in Texas. No big problems. Uh, there could be a few uh, showers here and there, but the temperatures will be plenty warm. El Paso continues to be one of the hot spots there at 100, Mike. So the hot stuff out west, what are we looking for today? Well, still hot, not 100 like yesterday, but we're still going to be on the above normal side. You know, you're talking about Woodlawn Lake. Not only is weather going to be good, but isn't this the first time the city's had the fireworks in a couple of years? Yeah. It's back. So the yeah. yeah, after a couple of years. So you know there's gonna be a million people out there. So yeah, we went a couple of years ago and it's like, oh, you can get so far and that was it. I think we stopped in the middle of the street to watch it. Anyway, uh yeah, it's gonna be good for that. We got a few clouds hanging around here yesterday. Beautiful sunset or and or uh, I think that was sunset there in uh Dehennis. Thank you very much for the KSAC Connect picture. And you can see we do have some clouds off in the uh the distance here. And then well off in the distance, we've got some of these showers and even a couple of uh thunderstorms. Pretty good cell right here, just to the northeast of Brackettville, and this is sliding up to the north, and it is sort of uh kind of coming together there as a uh, with some decent downpours on top of that as you can see and I want to check out and see if there's any by chance hail associated with this at all nothing is showing up right now but it is coming down pretty good clip we've got uh, pretty good amounts rainfall rates right now we're still looking at that center right there coming down at the rate of about four and a half uh, maybe close uh, three inches of rain perhaps a little bit more in a couple of spots so this is going to be give you a pretty good gully washer right now as it just kind of moves at a fairly slow pace not overly quickly up to the north so it's going to kind of sit in and, and um, well like I said give you a, a decent downpour and then we've got a few more out here from Rock Springs up in toward Junction. So that leftover energy is going to be sticking around throughout the day. 84 is what it feels like here in town. 78 Hondo, 74 in comfort. Throughout the morning, we'll drop maybe a couple of more degrees and we keep plenty of clouds around and rain out to the west. And then by noon up to 89, then we'll start to see a couple of more showers fire up. It looks like those showers out to the west will begin to kind of die down a little bit. But then once things begin to heat up this afternoon, we will see a few more of those showers and storms. 97 high temperature. This model is doing a pretty good job of hanging on to some of that leftover energy or showing that. And then, as you can see, some of those showers redevelop as we go into the late afternoon and evening hours. Uh, it's going to be kind of few and far between. And we'll have pretty much the same situation tomorrow. There may be one or two of them out there. But as we were talking about with some of the fireworks shows going on, like over there at Woodland Lake, wouldn't worry about it at all and temperatures will still stay just below 100 today as well as tomorrow. However, as we go into the weekend, the high which is now well off to the west of us. So we've got this little bit of a north northerly and northwesterly flow in the atmosphere. So these little disturbances come on in here, giving us the chance for some rain through basically Thursday. Then that thing's going to start to move on in here and set up camp just about right on top of us. And you know what that means, because that's what, what the situation was last week and the week before that with all the very extreme heat, which means we're going to be getting back up to 100 by, if not Friday, definitely by the weekend. 97s, 98s the next couple of days. Again, a stray shower here or there, but uh, not uh, a, a big, big deal. And again, going to fireworks tomorrow night should be pretty good. Hopefully, I mean, it'd be nice if there was a couple of showers around, even right? though it is fireworks time. But uh, yeah, most of us aren't going to be seeing anything as far as rain. All right. Well, at least the show will go on. Right. Thank you, Mike. 524, 79 degrees. And just ahead, one Hollywood union is still striking. Another is still talking. And another strike could slow things down in Tinseltown even further. Your morning spotlight news is coming up next. But first, all your lottery numbers, pick three, 784, Fireball 7, Daily 4 numbers, 2206, Fireball 4.
Cash 5, 9, 11, 12, 19, 24. Lotto, Texas, 27, 29, 35, 37, 44, 46. And your Powerball numbers, 4, 17, 35, 49, 61, Powerball 8, Power Play 2. Good luck. The Writers Guild is nearing the nine-week mark in its dispute with the studios and streaming outlets, while SAG-AFTRA, the Actors Union, has extended its negotiations to avoid a strike through July 12th. And now the local hospitality union, housekeepers, dishwashers and cooks, has announced its own walkout. Some 15,000 members of that union work at more than 60 area properties, including such Hollywood go-tos for press junkets and production shoots as the Chateau Marmont, the Beverly Hilton and the Beverly Wilshire. Hey, three grand, fix my car and I'll do it. No. Daruma is believed to be the first film starring two disabled leads, Tobias Forrest and John W. Lawson, in a story that's not about disability. The feature made its debut to a packed house at the recent Dances with Films Festival at Hollywood's TCL Chinese Theater. Up to 25 percent of Americans identify as having a disability, but few disabled actors are regulars in TV and film. July is Disability Pride Month. In Hollywood, I'm David Daniel. 528, 79 degrees. And let's check the roads with TransGuide. There's I-35 at Fisher Road where things are moving right now. We do know that there is a rollover around Loop 410 and I-10. We're gonna check in with Justin for all those details coming up. Welcome back, 531. I'm gonna give this whole talking thing another try outside with live cam right now. <laughs> Taking a look at the airport this morning. Traffic moving well along Loop 410 and we'll talk to Justin about your Monday commute in a moment. Welcome back everybody. It is 5.30 on our Monday, July 3rd. Thanks for joining us. We hope you had a wonderful weekend. How, how was your weekend? Good. 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 Everybody? Good. Projects around the house. Indoors. Indoors. That's Indoors. good. Yes, because it was still pretty toasty on Saturday. Yesterday wasn't bad. I mean, yeah. 97. Got a few raindrops yesterday morning. Mm -hmm. You can nice. kind of smell yeah. the, the rain a little bit. Trace officially out there at the airport. We do have a little bit more rain showing up on radar right now, well off to the west, and then that is going to help out some of that uh, energy with some showers and a couple of thunderstorms, just one or two of them later on today. A few clouds hanging around here right now, and uh, temperatures, uh, we are at 80 degrees, 2.73, which is up slightly from yesterday morning, and not oppressively humid, kind of getting there, if you will. Off to the uh, west of us, right there, and this is really hasn't moved all that much, just to the north and east of Brackettville. Pretty hefty downpours. We're seeing rainfall rates at uh, anywhere from about three, five inches per hour. Doesn't mean you'll necessarily get that much, but like I said, these have not really been moving all that much. So if you're heading out 90, and again, just to the north of uh, northeast of Brackettville, you are getting some very, very decent rain out there and then further up to the north we've got uh, sort of this broken line that's almost by Rock Springs heading up in toward Junction but uh, this area right there around Brackettville is what we're really kind of keeping an eye on and then that leftover energy is going to then help with a couple of more showers and storms later on today mold yesterday thanks to some of those early morning showers we were just talking about really, really went up 95 20. The update account comes out, of course, later on this morning. Here's the uh, rain chances out to the west of us. Temperatures may fluctuate a couple of degrees this morning. Then we make it up to 89 at noon and 97 high temperatures. So like yesterday, a few more clouds hanging around here, helping to keep the temperatures in check as far as not 100, although we're still three above normal and we will have just those kind of scattered showers, even a thunderstorm or two around here later on today. What about 4th of July and all the big fireworks activities going on tomorrow? What's the weather going to be like? Details on that coming up in just a couple of minutes. Traffic Authority, still got that big problem out there, Justin? Actually, it just cleared, Mike. So oh, we're seeing good. that on live cam here that uh, whatever was there, that we believe it was a rollover, Fort Center Night 10 has uh, cleared and been cleaned up. So traffic is back to normal here. Uh, but as we look at the map, we're still seeing an incident at 281, although I have not seen any slowdowns. The new one, though, that is coming in is uh, down here along I-37 near Goliad Road. Uh, we are getting another report of a rollover here, and uh, we don't have a camera on this one yet. Uh, it does not appear to be causing any slowdowns, but it could uh, here over the next 30 minutes or so if you're heading 
uh, in the town inbound on I-37. As we look at some of the trans guide shots, uh, I-35 at Fisher Road looks good there. Most of the traffic this morning, honestly, has been really light. That's 151 at 410. And we'll take another shot at I-10 at Martinez Creek. Looks good there, too. So uh, we expect traffic will be pretty light today. If there are any more incidents. We'll pass them along to you, guys. New this morning, San Antonio firefighters say a blaze caused heavy damage to a home on the city's northwest side. Flames spotted just after 930 on Hillcrest Drive near Bandera Road. Fire crews were able to keep the fire from completely destroying the home and say no one was there at the time. The home suffered around $50,000 worth of damage, but no injuries were reported. As we continue to deal with the summer heat, the Texas Department of State Health Services says it's aware of only one case of malaria in our state. However, no infected mosquitoes have been found, so there are a lot of questions. Dr. Jason Bowling with UT Health San Antonio joined us on Leading SA over this weekend. To address those concerns, here's our Max Massey. Dr. Bowling joined us. We talked about a lot. He explained what malaria actually is, the most recent findings here in the state of Texas and in Florida, and what families should know heading into Independence Day. Here's a bit of our conversation. Malaria is a disease that's caused not by a bacteria or a virus, but a different type of germ called a protozoa. It is only transmitted by mosquitoes to people, so it's not transmitted from person to person. We see most of the cases in the world, about 95% of them are on the continent of Africa. We do see cases every year in, in the United States, but they're usually coming from people that have visited other areas where it transmits locally. So it is big news that we have a local case here in Texas. What it means for people here in Texas is, fortunately, it's, the risk is extremely low. There's only been one case identified so far, and I think it's great news that we identified that one case. But it's important for people to recognize that mosquitoes are more than just a nuisance, right? More than just cause itchy bites. We also talked about the CDC's warning on measles, and we talked about if masks will be a part of our society for the long term. You can check out the full conversation right now. Just head to the Leading SA section of KSAT.com. We have Leading SA every Sunday morning at 8 a.m. We talk to leaders in and around our community, talk about timely issues. So, guys, we'll see you next Sunday. Back to you. And looking at the race for the White House in a video shared by the Ron DeSantis campaign concerning LGBTQ rights. The video is igniting some debate across the political spectrum. ABC's Rihanna Ali has the details. This morning, members of the LGBTQ community on both sides of the political aisle are criticizing a video shared by the Ron DeSantis campaign. To make America great again. The video was not produced by the DeSantis campaign, but was shared on social media to coincide with the end of Pride Month. It compares former President Trump's record on LGBTQ issues with DeSantis's record. I will do everything in my power to protect our LGBTQ citizen. The video goes on to highlight DeSantis's support for restrictions on LGBTQ people, particularly those who are transgender. I just produced some of the harshest, most draconian laws that literally threaten trans existence. Transportation Secretary Pete Buttigieg, who's openly gay, commented on the tone of the video. I'm going to leave aside the strangeness of trying to prove your manhood by putting up a video that splices images of you in between oiled up shirtless bodybuilders. And I just don't understand the mentality of yeah. somebody who gets up in the morning thinking that he's going to prove his worth by competing over who can make life hardest for a hard hit community that is already so vulnerable in America. The Log Cabin Republicans, a group for LGBTQ conservatives, responded, saying Ron DeSantis' extreme rhetoric has just ventured into homophobic territory. A spokesperson for DeSantis' campaign responded to the criticism, saying opposing the federal recognition of Pride Month isn't homophobic. We wouldn't support a month to celebrate straight people for sexual orientation either. It's unnecessary, divisive, pandering. In a country as vast and diverse as the USA, identity politics is poison. Rhiannon and Alley, ABC News, New York. 538, 79 degrees. And coming up later this morning on Good Morning America, an important reminder if you're planning to drive somewhere on the July 4th holiday, what you need to know about the dangerous blind spots for semi-truck drivers, that's on GMA beginning at seven. And after the break, we're traveling to the dark side of the universe. And let's look out there with live cam. Not too bad for now before the sun comes out. We're at 79 degrees and 
Maybe we won't hit 100 today, but it's going to be pretty hot. We're going to be checking in with Mike with all those details coming up. A European Space Telescope is on its way to explore the mysterious and invisible realm known as the Dark Universe. So SpaceX launched the European Space Agency's Euclid Observatory towards its ultimate destination one million miles away this weekend. It will take a month to get there and another two before it begins its ambitious six-year survey this fall. Euclid will scour billions of galaxies covering more than a third of the sky. Well, check this out. Ferry boats in Vancouver performed a synchronized ballet to mark Canada Day with no passengers on board. The captains maneuvered their boats in a sort of water dance as tourists took in the spectacle from the harbor. The skippers have been putting on a Canada Day show for over 30 years. Spectacular finale, complete with flyovers and a lot of high-tech gear. The ocean race considered sailing's greatest challenge coming to a close in Genoa this weekend. Sunny skies, light winds, and enthusiastic crowds were on hand to commemorate the six-month around the world odyssey. So it is considered one of the most important ports in the Mediterranean. I saw some video of that this weekend. The planes were pretty cool. Oh, you did see it? Yeah, oh, the, nice. the, the, the show over the water. Yeah, that's impressive. Of course, the big deal was down on the water itself there in Genoa. 543, 79 degrees. And just ahead, the message from two seniors at Haven for Hope, what they want you to know and their message of hope. And welcome back. It's 547. The economy's downturn and rising housing prices have left many senior citizens homeless. Haven for Hope is seeing a spike in older clients, which is why they just started a new program to house them more quickly. Courtney Freeman spoke to two seniors at Haven for Hope who fell on tough times and are hoping to soon get the keys to their own place again. 66-year-old Nathan Finley lived on the streets for 15 years. I ended up on the streets because uh, the economy was very hard and now it's gotten increasingly harder. He watched housing prices spike and decided he'd never be able to afford his own place. I ended up, you know, in, in a, a tunnel or a, a cardboard box, so to speak, and um, I got tired of that and I said, this isn't me, I'm better than this. He came to Haven for Hope on May 17th. I said, how old are you? I said, 66. And they say, why didn't you come see us sooner? Okay. They immediately set okay. him up with medical insurance and social I, security. I that. That's what's saving my life right now. 76-year-old okay. Charles Powell yeah, recently no separated from his wife and had nowhere to go. He ended up at Haven in April with one goal, to get his own home. They have different programs, and then they fit you into whatever program you should be in. And right now, I'm just going through the process takes a little time. But as a senior with health problems, he won't be waiting nearly as long as others. We just uh, started out a new uh, agreement with Opportunity Home, and that's specifically for those with a disability or 62 and older. Haven for Hope Housing Director Ashley Atkins says that new program and partnership began in response to the recent spike in older clients experiencing homelessness. And they go straight into a public housing unit. So instead of waiting four years on the general wait list, they could be here, we do the paperwork, and they wait maybe a month to a unit. In the meantime, they live at the shelter and brush up on their skills. Learning how to deal with uh, everything that's changed because the housing and the cost of food has gone up and that's, you know, the basic essentials that everybody needs. Getting ready for the future. Where well, you can put your key in your own door and go sleep, wake up in your own house, everything's good. Powell, emotional because he knows with the help he's getting, it will soon become a reality. Courtney Friedman, KSAT 12 News. 549. Let's check back with Justin Horn. And uh, not a lot going on out there, guys. We look <laughs> at Transguide here, 90 at Meadow Creek. The traffic may be picking up a little bit, but not much. Overall, we expect it to be a pretty quiet morning on the roadways, or at least we expect less traffic because uh, some people do have the day off. And uh, yeah, just uh, a little bit of traffic here and there. We do still have that incident down along I-37. This is near Goliad Road. This came in as a rollover, and it is now causing a little bit of a slowdown as you're coming into town inbound on I-37. But it's not a lot, so I, it's it's not a big problem yet. If it's still there here over the next hour, it may become more of an issue. We'll keep you posted there. Uh, meantime, we've been passing this along this morning, but if you're headed out to Woodlawn Lake tomorrow, be aware that there will be a lot of traffic around Woodlawn Lake as 
the city's fireworks shows, the HEB fireworks show is going to get underway around 9 o'clock, but festivities start as early as 11.30. There is free parking there, but that fills up quickly. You may have to park on some of the streets. Just be mindful of the no parking signs, folks' driveways, and things like that if you're heading out there. Good reminder. Thank you for that, sir. Appreciate yeah. it. Yeah, it gets pretty crowded there. Sometimes, I mean, if you go late enough, I think you've experienced it as well. Just because we live kind of kind of close and yeah. you think, oh, we'll just head out you there later. Sneak in. Yeah. No, there's you, no sneak in there. You, you get stuck. I mean, you still get a show in your car, <laughs> but you, don't, you can't park anywhere. Because I think it picks up. Uh, actually, things start about 11 in the morning. Mm -hmm. 11.30, yeah. yeah. Yeah, with all the activities out there and yeah. everything. So, yeah, people are going to get up, get out there and just... Yeah, enjoy the day. Stay. So, mm -hmm. anyway, be fun, though. it's going to be nice for it. It's going to be uh, definitely on the warm side, and we'll have some humidity tomorrow as well. So, just prepare for that. If you are going to be heading out there, you know, make sure you take lots and lots of water with you and lots and lots of sunscreen. A hat's always a really good idea as well to keep the sun off your head. So, beautiful view of the moon rising from yesterday and today is the full moon and it's uh, according to Indian Native American lore it is the full buck moon when a buck's antlers are in full growth mode. So thank you very much. We've got another great shot of the uh, full moon coming up here in just a, about an hour or so. All right, live cam right now. We've got some clouds hanging around here and we have been watching this batch of showers and actually it's this cluster right down here there in uh, right around Sprackettville, almost now wanting to head in toward Concan. It's not moving all that quickly. It had been moving up to the north primarily, but now it looks like it's almost wanting to spread a little bit more to the northeast. And it was a bit more intense earlier. And now let me take the lightning off of this. It looks like even though it's a bit bigger in size, it does now look like it has sort of weaken in spots, but I mean, like right there, you're still getting some decent downpours. Let's check the uh, the rainfall rate very quickly with this. And uh, yeah, it's not. I mean, we've got those couple of intense little spots right there. Five inches per hour. That one little spot there is uh, about three inches per hour. So yeah, it is coming down pretty good and it's not like I said, moving all that quickly. And this is starting to like I said, spread off to the uh, east and to the northeast just a little bit more as it continues to move. So here it is without the, uh, the lightning in place. So this is going to continue to work its way over just to the north of Uvalde, but uh, Concan, Lakey, you may be seeing uh, some of these showers and even a couple of uh, thunderstorms if this in does indeed hold together throughout the rest of the morning and a lot of leftover energy and then that cell up there around Junction, but that's also sliding up to the north. So uh, just we'll keep an eye on this as it continues. It's primarily northeastward progress. 97 yesterday, and there was only on this map two triple digit readings out there, which is just wonderful to see, almost unimaginable. We will have more around here today. 97 out there at the airport and even a couple of spots are going to be staying on the uh, on the lower side and that's just because of some extra cloud cover around here so that's going to help to keep temperatures down now we'll still have a bit of a heat index to deal with into the low hundreds nothing just outrageously way off the charts though which is good news because at least we are going through that 24-hour cycle of seeing the lower humidity then in the afternoons the leftover energy out there off to the west of us is still going to help to spawn a couple of more showers uh, scattered thunderstorm or two here or there later on this afternoon not a great chance of rain though now this is the longer range computer model and this one kind of does it with a broad brush but what you can take away from this is today as well as tomorrow now, this one's not really uh, showing anything for tomorrow. I think there'll be one or two of them hanging around here, perhaps a scattered one on Wednesday, Thursday as well, a, a stray shower or two. And then we go into Friday and the weekend, nothing. And what that's going to be combined with is some hotter temperatures going into this weekend. So the forecast goes like this today. We are going to be up to 97 degrees and we will be about three above normal 98 tomorrow. A stray shower or two can't be ruled out through basically Thursday. And then we heat up this weekend. We'll be back.
Coming up, we're following the severe weather overnight for millions of Americans. The forecast heading into our holiday and how it's affecting all of our travel plans. We'll track the latest. Also this morning, zip line dangers. The new warning after a series of recent incidents, including a young boy who plunges 40 feet and is fortunately okay. And the internet's favorite grandma, Babs Costello, is here with her 4th of July cookout hacks from the perfect hot dog to some savory side dishes that you're expecting. That's all coming up right here on GMA.